The Cincinnati Reds are an American professional baseball team based in Cincinnati, Ohio. The Reds compete in Major League Baseball as a member club of the National League Central Division, and were a charter member of the American Association in 1881 before joining the NL in 1890. The Reds played in the NL West Division from 1969 to 1993, before joining the Central Division in 1994. They have won five World Series championships, nine NL pennants, one AA pennant, and 10 division titles. The team plays its home games at Great American Ballpark, which opened in 2003. Bob Castellini has been the CEO of the Reds since 2006. From 1882 to 2021, the Reds' overall win-loss record is 10,713 to 10,501. The 1888 Cincinnati Reds The origins of the modern Cincinnati Reds baseball team can be traced back to the expulsion from the National League of an earlier team bearing the same name. In 1876, Cincinnati became one of the charter members of the new National League, but the club ran afoul of league organizer and longtime president William Holbert for selling beer during games and renting out their ballpark on Sundays. Both were important in enticing the city's large German population to support the team. While Holbert made clear his distaste for both beer and Sunday baseball at the founding of the league, neither practice was against league rules at the time. On October 6, 1880, however, Seven of the eight team owners adopted a pledge to ban both beer and Sunday baseball at the regular league meeting in December. Only Cincinnati President W. H. Kennett refused to sign the pledge, so the other owners preemptively expelled Cincinnati from the league for violating the new rules even though they were not yet in effect. Cincinnati's expulsion incensed Cincinnati Enquirer sports editor O. P. Kaler, who made two attempts to form a new league on behalf of the receivers for the now bankrupt Reds franchise. When these attempts failed, he formed a new independent ball club known as the Red Stockings in the spring of 1881, and brought the team to Street Louis for a weekend exhibition. The Reds' first game was a 12-3 victory over the Street Louis club. After the 1881 series proved successful, Kaler and former Reds president Justice Turner received an invitation from Philadelphia businessman Horace Phillips to attend a meeting of several clubs in Pittsburgh planning to establish a new league to compete with the NL. Upon arriving, However, Kaler and Turner found that no other owners had accepted the invitation, while even Phillips declined to attend his own meeting. By chance, the duo met former pitcher Al Pratt, who paired them with former Pittsburgh Alleghenies president H. Denny McKnight. Together, the three hatched a scheme to form a new league by sending a telegram to each of the owners who were invited to attend the meeting stating that he was the only person who did not attend and that everyone else was enthusiastic about the new venture and eager to attend a second meeting in Cincinnati. The ploy worked, and the American Association was officially formed at the Hotel Gibson in Cincinnati. The new Reds, with Turner now serving as president, became a charter member of the AA. Led by the hitting of third baseman Hick Carpenter, the defense of future Hall of Fame second baseman Bid McPhee, and the pitching of 40-game winner Will White, the Reds won the inaugural AA pennant in 1882. With the establishment of the Union Association in 1884, Turner left the club to finance the Cincinnati Outlaw Reds, and managed to acquire the lease on the Reds' Bank Street grounds playing field. Forcing new president Aaron Stern to relocate three blocks away to the hastily built League Park. The club never placed higher than second or lower than fifth for the rest of its tenure in the American Association. Cincinnati Reds baseball team In 1909 the Cincinnati Red Stockings left the American Association on November 14, 1889, and joined the National League along with the Brooklyn Bridegrooms after a dispute with Street. Louis Brown's owner Chris Von Der Ahe over the selection of a new league president. The National League was happy to accept the teams in part due to the emergence of the new Players League, an early failed attempt to break the reserve clause in baseball that threatened both existing leagues. Because the National League decided to expand while the American Association was weakening, the team accepted an invitation to join the National League. After shortening their name to the Reds, the team wandered through the 1890s, signing local stars and aging veterans. During this time, the team never finished above third place and never closer than ten and a half games to first. At the start of the 20th century, the Reds had hitting star Sam Crawford and Cy Seymour. Seymour's 377 average in 1905 was the first individual batting crown won by a Red. In 1911, Bob Besker stole 81 bases, which is still a team record. Like the previous decade, the 1900s were not kind to the Reds, as much of the decade was spent in the league's second division. 
Hall of Famer Ed Rausch led Cincinnati to the 1919 World Series. In 1912, the club opened Redland Field, a new steel and concrete ballpark. The Reds had been playing baseball on that same site, the corner of Finley and Western Avenues on the city's west side, for 28 years in wooden structures that had been occasionally damaged by fires. By the late 1910s, the Reds began to come out of the second division. The 1918 team finished fourth, and new manager Pat Moran led the Reds to an NL pennant in 1919, in what the club advertised as its golden anniversary. The 1919 team had hitting stars Ed Rausch and Heine Groh, while the pitching staff was led by Hot Eller and left-hander Harry Slim Sally. The Reds finished ahead of John McGraw's New York Giants, and then won the World Championship in eight games over the Chicago White Sox. By 1920, the Black Sox scandal had brought a taint to the Reds' first championship. After 1926 and well into the 1930s, the Reds were second division dwellers. Epper Rixey, Dolph Luque and Pete Donahue were pitching stars, but the offense never lived up to the pitching. By 1931, the team was bankrupt, the Great Depression was in full swing, and Redland Field was in a state of disrepair. Powell Crosley Jr., an electronics magnate who, with his brother Louis M. Crosley, produced radios, refrigerators and other household items, bought the Reds out of bankruptcy in 1933, and hired Larry McPhail to be the general manager. Crosley had started WLW Radio, the Reds' flagship radio broadcaster, and the Crosley Broadcasting Corporation in Cincinnati, where he was also a prominent civic leader. McPhail began to develop the Reds' minor league system and expanded the Reds' fan base. Throughout the rest of the decade, the Reds became a team of firsts. The now-renamed Crosley Field became the host of the first night game in 1935, which was also the first baseball fireworks night. Johnny Vandermeer became the only pitcher in Major League history to throw back-to-back no-hitters in 1938. Thanks to Vandermeer, Paul Derringer and second baseman slash third baseman turned pitcher Bucky Walters, the Reds had a solid pitching staff. The offense came around in the late 1930s. By 1938, the Reds, now led by manager Bill McKenney, were out of the second division, finishing fourth. Ernie Lombardi was named the National League's most valuable player in 1938. By 1939, the Reds were National League champions only to be swept in the World Series by the New York Yankees. In 1940, the Reds repeated as NL champions, and for the first time in 21 years, they captured a world championship, beating the Detroit Tigers four games to three. Frank McCormick was the 1940 NL MVP. Other position players included Harry Kraft, Lonnie Frey, Eval Goodman, Lou Riggs, and Bill Werber. World War II and age finally caught up with the Reds as the team finished mostly in the second division throughout the 1940s and early 1950s. In 1944, Joe Nuxall, at age 15, pitched for the Reds on loan from Wilson Junior High School in Hamilton, Ohio. He became the youngest player ever to appear in a major league game, a record that still stands today. Yilda Whit Blackwell was the main pitching stalwart before arm problems cut short his career. Ted Klasuski was the NL home run leader in 1954. The rest of the offense was a collection of over-the-hill players and not ready for primetime youngsters. Ted Klasuski in April 1953, the Reds announced a preference to be called the Red Legs, saying that the name of the club had been Red Stockings and then Red Legs. A newspaper speculated that it was due to the developing political connotation of the word red to mean communism. From 1956 to 1960, the club's logo was altered to remove the term Reds from the inside of the wishbone C symbol. The word Reds reappeared on the 1961 uniforms, but the point of the C was removed. The traditional home uniform logo was reinstated in 1967. In 1956, the Red Legs, led by National League Rookie of the Year Frank Robinson, hit 221 HR to tie the NL record. By 1961, Robinson was joined by Vada Pinson, Wally Post, Gordy Coleman, and Gene Fries. Pitchers Joey J, Jim O'Toole and Bob Perky led the staff. The Reds captured the 1961 National League pennant, holding off the Los Angeles Dodgers and San Francisco Giants, only to be defeated by the perennially powerful New York Yankees in the World Series. The Reds had winning teams during the rest of the 1960s, but did not produce any championships. They won 98 games in 1962, paced by Perky's 23, but finished third. In 1964, they lost the pennant by one game to the street. Louis Cardinals after having taken first place when the Philadelphia Phillies collapsed in September. 
Their beloved manager Fred Hutchinson died of cancer just weeks after the end of the 1964 season. The failure of the Reds to win the 1964 pennant led to owner Bill DeWitt selling off key components of the team in anticipation of relocating the franchise. In response to DeWitt's threatened move, women of Cincinnati banded together to form the Rosie Reds to urge DeWitt to keep the franchise in Cincinnati. The Rosie Reds are still in existence, and are currently the oldest fan club in Major League Baseball. After the 1965 season, DeWitt executed what is remembered as the most lopsided trade in baseball history, sending former MVP Frank Robinson to the Baltimore Orioles for pitchers Melt Pappas and Jack Balchoon, and outfielder Dick Simpson. Robinson went on to win the MVP and Triple Crown in the American League for 1966, and led Baltimore to its first-ever World Series title in a sweep of the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Reds did not recover from this trade until the rise of the Big Red Machine in the 1970s. Crosley Field, the Reds' home stadium from 1912 to 1970 starting in the early 1960s, the Reds' farm system began producing a series of stars, including Jim Maloney, Pete Rose, Tony Perez, Johnny Bench, Lee May, Tommy Helms, Bernie Carbo, Hal McRae, Dave Concepcion, and Gary Nolan. The tipping point came in 1967, with the appointment of Bob Halsam as general manager. That same year, the Reds avoided a move to San Diego when the city of Cincinnati and Hamilton County agreed to build a state-of-the-art, downtown stadium on the edge of the Ohio River. The Reds entered into a 30-year lease in exchange for the stadium commitment keeping the franchise in Cincinnati. In a series of strategic moves, Housen brought in key personnel to complement the homegrown talent. The Reds' final game at Crosley Field, where they had played since 1912, was played on June 24, 1970, with a 5-4 victory over the San Francisco Giants. Under Housem's administration starting in the late 1960s, all players coming to the Reds were required to shave and cut their hair for the next three decades in order to present the team as wholesome in an era of turmoil. The rule was controversial, but persisted well into the ownership of Marge Schott. On at least one occasion, in the early 1980s, enforcement of this rule lost the Reds the services of star reliever and Ohio native Rolly Fingers, who would not shave his trademark handlebar mustache in order to join the team. The rule was not officially rescinded until 1999, when the Reds traded for slugger Greg Vaughn, who had a goatee. The New York Yankees continue to have a similar rule today, although Yankees players are permitted to have mustaches. Much like when players leave the Yankees today, players who left the Reds took advantage with their new teams. Pete Rose, for instance, grew his hair out much longer than would be allowed by the Reds once he signed with the Philadelphia Phillies in 1979. The Reds' rules also included conservative uniforms. In Major League Baseball, a club generally provides most of the equipment and clothing needed for play. However, players are required to supply their gloves and shoes themselves. Many players enter into sponsorship arrangements with shoe manufacturers, but until the mid-1980s, the Reds had a strict rule requiring players to wear only plain black shoes with no prominent logo. Reds players decried what they considered to be the boring color choice, as well as the denial of the opportunity to earn more money through shoe contracts. In 1985, a compromise was struck in which players could paint red marks on their black shoes and were allowed to wear all red shoes the following year. Riverfront Stadium, the home stadium of the Reds from 1970 to 2002 and 1970, little-known George Sparky Anderson was hired as manager of the Reds. And the team embarked upon a decade of excellence, with a lineup that came to be known as the Big Red Machine. Playing at Crosley Field until June 30, 1970, when they moved into Riverfront Stadium, a new 52,000-seat multipurpose venue on the shores of the Ohio River, the Reds began the 1970s with a bang by winning 70 of their first 100 games. Johnny Bench, Tony Perez, Pete Rose, Lee May, and Bobby Tolan were the early offensive leaders of this era. Gary Nolan, Jim Merritt, Wayne Simpson, and Jim McLaughlin led a pitching staff which also contained veterans Tony Cloninger and Clay Carroll as well as youngsters Pedro Borbone and Don Goulet. The Reds breezed through the 1970 season, winning the NL West and capturing the NL pennant by sweeping the Pittsburgh Pirates in three games. By the time the club got to the World Series, however, the pitching staff had run out of gas, and the veteran Baltimore Orioles, led by Hall of Fame third baseman and World Series MVP Brooks Robinson, beat the Reds in five games. After the disastrous 1971 season, the Reds reloaded by trading veterans Jimmy Stewart. May and Tommy Helms to the Houston Astros for Joe Morgan, Cesar Geronimo, Jack Billingham, Ed Armbruster, and Dennis Mink. 
Meanwhile, Dave Concepcion blossomed at shortstop. 1971 was also the year a key component of future world championships was acquired, when George Foster was traded to the Reds from the San Francisco Giants in exchange for shortstop Frank Duffy. Hall of Famers, Johnny Bench, Joe Morgan, Tony Perez The 1972 Reds won the NL West in baseball's first-ever strike-shortened season, and defeated the Pittsburgh Pirates in a five-game playoff series. They then faced the Oakland Athletics in the World Series, who won six of the seven games by one run. With powerful slugger Reggie Jackson sidelined by an injury incurred during Oakland's playoff series, Ohio native Gene Tennis got a chance to play in the series. Delivering four home runs that tied the World Series record for homers, propelling Oakland to a dramatic seven-game series win. This was one of the few World Series in which no starting pitcher for either side pitched a complete game. The Reds won a third NL West crown in 1973 after a dramatic second-half comeback that saw them make up 10-plus half games on the Los Angeles Dodgers after the All-Star break. However, they lost the NL pennant to the New York Mets in five games in the NLCS. In Game 1, Tom Seaver faced Jack Billingham in a classic pitching duel, with all three runs of the 2-1 margin being scored on home runs. John Milner provided New York's runoff Billingham, while Pete Rose tied the game in the seventh inning off Seaver, setting the stage for a dramatic game-ending home run by Johnny Bench in the bottom of the ninth. The New York series provided plenty of controversies surrounding the riotous behavior of Shea Stadium fans towards Pete Rose when he and Bud Harrelson scuffled after a hard slide by Rose into Harrelson at second base during the fifth inning of Game 3. A full bench-clearing fight resulted after Harrelson responded to Rose's aggressive move to prevent him from completing a double play by calling him a name. This also led to two more incidents in which play was stopped. The Reds trailed 9-3, and New York's manager Yogi Berra and legendary outfielder Willie Mays, at the request of National League President Warren Giles, appealed to fans in left field to restrain themselves. The next day the series was extended to a fifth game when Rose homered in the twelfth inning to tie the series at two games each. The Reds won 98 games in 1974, but finished second to the 102-win Los Angeles Dodgers. The 1974 season started off with much excitement, as the Atlanta Braves were in town to open the season with the Reds. Hank Aaron entered opening day with 713 home runs, one shy of tying Babe Ruth's record of 714. The first pitch Aaron swung at in the 1974 season was the record-tying home run off Jack Billingham. The next day, the Braves benched Aaron, hoping to save him for his record-breaking home run on their season-opening homestand. Then Commissioner Bowie Kuhn ordered Braves management to play Aaron the next day, where he narrowly missed a historic home run in the fifth inning. Aaron went on to set the record in Atlanta two nights later. The 1974 season also saw the debut of Hall of Fame radio announcer Marty Brenneman, after Al Michaels left the Reds to broadcast for the San Francisco Giants. With 1975, the Big Red Machine lineup solidified with the Great Eight starting team of Johnny Bench, Tony Perez, Joe Morgan, Dave Concepcion, Pete Rose, Ken Griffey, Cesar Jeronimo, and George Foster. The starting pitchers included Don Goulet, Fred Norman, Gary Nolan, Jack Billingham, Pat Darcy, and Clay Kirby. The bullpen featured Raleigh Eastwick and Will McEnany combining for 37 saves, and veterans Pedro Bourbon and Clay Carroll. On opening day, Rose still played in left field and Foster was not a starter, while John Vukovic, an off-season acquisition, was the starting third baseman. While Vukovic was a superb fielder, he was a weak hitter. In May, with the team off to a slow start and trailing the Dodgers, Sparky Anderson made a bold move by moving Rose to third base, a position where he had very little experience, and inserting Foster in left field. This was the jolt that the Reds needed to propel them into first place, with Rose proving to be reliable on defense, while adding Foster to the outfield gave the offense some added punch. During the season, the Reds compiled two notable streaks, by winning 41 out of 50 games in one stretch, and by going a month without committing any errors on defense. Pete Rose had bat in a game at Dodger Stadium during the 1970s and the 1975 season, Cincinnati clinched the NL West with 108 victories before sweeping the Pittsburgh Pirates in three games to win the NL pennant. They went on to face the Boston Red Sox in the World Series, splitting the first four games and taking Game 5. After a three-day rain delay, the two teams met in Game 6, considered by many to be the best World Series game ever. The Reds were ahead 6-3 with five outs left when the Red Sox tied the game on former Red Bernie Carbo's three-run home run, his second pinch hit three-run homer in the series. After a few close calls either way, 
Carlton Fisk hit a dramatic 12th inning home run off the foul pole in left field to give the Red Sox a 7-6 win and force a deciding Game 7. Cincinnati prevailed the next day when Morgan's RBI single won Game 7 and gave the Reds their first championship in 35 years. The Reds have not lost a World Series game since Carlton Fisk's home run, a span of nine straight wins. 1976 saw a return of the same starting eight in the field. The starting rotation was again led by Nolan, Goulet, Billingham, and Norman, while the addition of rookies Pat Zachary and Santo Alcala comprised an underrated staff in which four of the six had ERAs below three. 10. Eastwick, Bourbon and McEnany shared closer duties, recording 26, 8 and 7 saves, respectively. The Reds won the NL West by 10 games and went undefeated in the postseason, sweeping the Philadelphia Phillies to return to the World Series where they beat the Yankees at the newly renovated Yankee Stadium in the first series held there since 1964. This was only the second ever sweep of the Yankees in the World Series, and the Reds became the first NL team since the 1921-22 New York Giants to win consecutive World Series championships. To date, the 1975 and 1976 Reds were the last NL team to repeat as champions. Beginning with the 1970 National League pennant, the Reds beat either of the two Pennsylvania-based clubs, the Philadelphia Phillies or the Pittsburgh Pirates to win their pennants. Making the Big Red Machine part of the rivalry between the two Pennsylvania teams. In 1979, Pete Rose added further fuel to the Big Red Machine, being part of the rivalry when he signed with the Phillies and helped them win their first World Series in 1980. The late 1970s brought turmoil and change to the Reds. Popular Tony Perez was sent to the Montreal Expos after the 1976 season, breaking up the Big Red Machine starting lineup. Manager Sparky Anderson and general manager Bob Howsam later considered this trade to be the biggest mistake of their careers. Starting pitcher Don Goulet left via free agency and signed with the New York Yankees. In an effort to fill that gap, a trade with the Oakland Athletics for starting ace Vita Blue was arranged during the 1976-77 offseason. However, Bowie Kuhn, then commissioner of baseball, vetoed the trade in order to maintain competitive balance in baseball. Some have suggested that the actual reason had more to do with Kuhn's continued feud with Athletics owner Charlie Finley. On June 15, 1977, the Reds acquired pitcher Tom Seaver from the New York Mets for Pat Zachary, Doug Flynn, Steve Henderson, and Dan Norman. In other deals that proved to be less successful, the Reds traded Gary Nolan to the California Angels for Craig Hendrickson, Raleigh Eastwick to the street. Louis Cardinals for Doug Capilla, and Mike Caldwell to the Milwaukee Brewers for Rick O'Keefe and Gary Picca as well as Rick Auerbach from Texas. The end of the Big Red Machine era was heralded by the replacement of general manager Bob Howsam with Dick Wagner. In his last season as a Red, Rose gave baseball a thrill as he challenged Joe DiMaggio's 56-game hitting streak, tying for the second-longest streak ever at 44 games. The streak came to an end in Atlanta after striking out in his fifth at-bat in the game against Gene Garber. Rose also earned his 3,000th hit that season, on his way to becoming baseball's all-time hits leader when he rejoined the Reds in the mid-1980s. The year also witnessed the only no-hitter of Hall of Fame pitcher Tom Seaver's career, coming against the street. Louis Cardinals on June 16, 1978. George Foster slugged 52 home runs in 1977, earning the NL MVP award. After the 1978 season and two straight second-place finishes, Wagner fired manager Anderson in a move that proved to be unpopular. Pete Rose, who had played almost every position for the team except pitcher, shortstop and catcher since 1963, signed with Philadelphia as a free agent. By 1979, the starters were Bench, Dan Dreesen, Morgan, Concepcion, and Ray Knight, with Griffey, Foster and Geronimo again in the outfield. The pitching staff had experienced a complete turnover since 1976, except for Fred Norman. In addition to ace starter Tom Seaver, the remaining starters were Mike Lacoste, Bill Bonham and Paul Moscow. In the bullpen, only Bourbon had remained. Dave Tomlin and Mario Soto worked middle relief, with Tom Hume and Doug Bear closing. The Reds won the 1979 NL West behind the pitching of Seaver, but were dispatched in the NL playoffs by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Game 2 featured a controversial play in which a ball hit by Pittsburgh's Phil Garner was caught by Reds outfielder Dave Collins but was ruled a trap, setting the Pirates up to take a 2-1 lead. The Pirates swept the series three games to zero and went on to win the World Series against the Baltimore Orioles. The 1981 team fielded a strong lineup, with only Concepcion, 
Foster and Griffey retaining their spots from the 1975-76 heyday. After Johnny Bench was able to play only a few games as catcher each year after 1980 due to ongoing injuries, Joe Nolan took over as starting catcher. Dreesen and Bench shared first base, and Knight start at third. Morgan and Geronimo had been replaced at second base and center field by Ron Oster and Dave Collins, respectively. Mario Soto posted a banner year starting on the mound, only surpassed by the outstanding performance of Seaver's Cy Young runner-up season. La Cosse, Bruce Barony and Frank Pastore rounded out the starting rotation. Hume again led the bullpen as closer, joined by Bear and Joe Price. In 1981, the Reds had the best overall record in baseball, but finished second in the division in both of the half-seasons that resulted from a mid-season player's strike, and missed the playoffs. To commemorate this, a team photo was taken, accompanied by a banner that read Baseball's Best Record 1981. By 1982, the Reds were a shell of the original Red Machine, having lost 101 games that year. Johnny Bench, after an unsuccessful transition to third base, retired a year later. After the heartbreak of 1981, General Manager Dick Wagner pursued the strategy of ridding the team of veterans, including third baseman Knight and the entire starting outfield of Griffey, Foster, and Collins. Bench, after being able to catch only seven games in 1981, was moved from platooning at first base to be the starting third baseman. Alex Trevino became the regular starting catcher. The outfield was staffed with Paul Householder, Cesar Cedeno and future Colorado Rockies and Pittsburgh Pirates manager Clint Hurdle on opening day. Hurdle was an immediate bust, and rookie Eddie Milner took his place in the starting outfield early in the year. The highly touted Householder struggled throughout the year despite extensive playing time. Cedeno, while providing steady veteran play, was a disappointment, unable to recapture his glory days with the Houston Astros. The starting rotation featured the emergence of a dominant Mario Soto, and featured strong years by Pastore and Bruce Barney, but Seaver was injured all year, and their efforts were wasted without a strong offensive lineup. Tom Hume still led the bullpen along with Joe Price, but the colorful Brad the Animal Leslie was unable to consistently excel, and former All-Star Jim Kern was also a disappointment. Kern was also publicly upset over having to shave off his prominent beard to join the Reds, and helped force the issue of getting traded during mid-season by growing it back. The season also saw the mid-season firing of manager John McNamara, who was replaced as skipper by Russ Nixon. The Reds fell to the bottom of the Western Division for the next few years. After the 1982 season, Seaver was traded back to the Mets. 1983 found Dan Bilardello behind the plate, Bench returning to part-time duty at first base, Rookies Nick S. Askey taking over at third base and Gary Reedus taking over from Cedeno. Tom Hume's effectiveness as a closer had diminished, and no other consistent relievers emerged. Dave Concepcion was the sole remaining starter from the Big Red Machine era. Wagner's tenure ended in 1983, when Housem, the architect of the Big Red Machine, was brought back. The popular Housem began his second term as Red's general manager by signing Cincinnati native Dave Parker as a free agent from Pittsburgh. In 1984 the Reds began to move up, depending on trades and some minor leaguers. In that season Dave Parker, Dave Concepcion and Tony Perez were in Cincinnati uniforms. In August 1984, Pete Rose was reacquired and hired to be the Reds' player manager. After raising the franchise from the grave, Housem gave way to the administration of Bill Burgish, who attempted to build the team around a core of highly regarded young players in addition to veterans like Parker. However, he was unable to capitalize on an excess of young and highly touted position players including Kurt Stilwell, Tracy Jones, and Cal Daniels by trading them for pitching. Despite the emergence of Tom Browning as Rookie of the Year in 1985, when he won 20 games, the rotation was devastated by the early demise of Mario Soto's career to arm injury. Under Burgish, the Reds finished second four times from 1985 to 1989. Among the highlights, Rose became the all-time hits leader, Tom Browning threw a perfect game, Eric Davis became the first player in baseball history to hit at least 35 home runs and steal 50 bases. And Chris Sabo was the 1988 National League Rookie of the Year. The Reds also had a bullpen star in John Franco, who was with the team from 1984 to 1989. Rose once had Concepcion pitch late in a game at Dodger Stadium. In 1989, following the release of the Dowd Report, which accused Rose of betting on baseball games, Rose was banned from baseball by Commissioner Bart Giamatti, who declared Rose guilty of conduct detrimental to baseball. Controversy also swirled around Red's owner Marge Schott, 
who was accused several times of ethnic and racial slurs. In 1987, General Manager Burgish was replaced by Murray Cook, who initiated a series of deals that would finally bring the Reds back to the championship, starting with acquisitions of Danny Jackson and Jose Rijo. An aging Dave Parker was let go after a revival of his career in Cincinnati following the Pittsburgh drug trials. Barry Larkin emerged as the starting shortstop over Kurt Stilwell, who, along with reliever Ted Power, was traded for Jackson. In 1989, Cook was succeeded by Bob Quinn, who put the final pieces of the championship puzzle together, with the acquisitions of Hal Morris, Billy Hatcher, and Randy Myers. Eric Davis in 1990 and 1990, the Reds, under new manager Lou Piniella, shocked baseball by leading the NL West from wire to wire, making them the only NL team to do so. Winning their first nine games, they started off 33-12 and maintained their lead throughout the year. Led by Chris Sabo, Barry Larkin, Eric Davis, Paul O'Neill, and Billy Hatcher in the field, and by Jose Rijo, Tom Browning and the nasty boys of Rob Dibble, Norm Charlton and Randy Myers on the mound. The Reds took out the Pirates in the NLCS. The Reds swept the heavily favored Oakland Athletics in four straight, and extended a winning streak in the World Series to nine consecutive games. This series, however, saw Eric Davis severely bruise a kidney diving for a fly ball in Game 4, and his play was greatly limited the next year. In 1992, Quinn was replaced in the front office by Jim Bowden. On the field, manager Lou Piniella wanted outfielder Paul O'Neill to be a power hitter to fill the void Eric Davis left when he was traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers in exchange for Tim Belcher. However, O'Neill only hit 246 and 14 homers. The Reds returned to winning after a losing season in 1991, but 90 wins was only enough for second place behind the division-winning Atlanta Braves. Before the season ended, Piniella got into an altercation with reliever Rob Dibble. In the offseason, Paul O'Neill was traded to the New York Yankees for outfielder Roberto Kelly, who was a disappointment for the Reds over the next couple of years, while O'Neill led a downtrodden Yankees franchise to a return to glory. Around this time, the Reds would replace their big red machine era uniforms in favor of a pinstripe uniform with no sleeves. For the 1993 season, Piniella was replaced by fan favorite Tony Perez, but he lasted only 44 games at the helm before being replaced by Davey Johnson. With Johnson steering the team, the Reds made steady progress. In 1994, the Reds were in the newly created National League Central Division with the Chicago Cubs, Street, Louis Cardinals, and fellow rivals Pittsburgh Pirates, and Houston Astros. By the time the strike hit, the Reds finished a half game ahead of the Houston Astros for first place in the NL Central. In 1995, the Reds won the division thanks to MVP Barry Larkin. After defeating the NL West champion Dodgers in the first NLDS since 1981, however, they lost to the Atlanta Braves. Opening day at Riverfront Stadium, 1995 team owner Marge Schott announced mid-season that Johnson would be gone by the end of the year, regardless of outcome, to be replaced by former Reds third baseman Ray Knight. Johnson and Schott had never gotten along, and she did not approve of Johnson living with his fiancée before they were married. In contrast, Knight, along with his wife, professional golfer Nancy Lopez, were friends of Schott. The team took a dive under Knight, who was unable to complete two full seasons as manager and was subject to complaints in the press about his strict managerial style. In 1999, the Reds won 96 games, led by manager Jack McKeon, but lost to the New York Mets in a one-game playoff. Earlier that year, Schott sold controlling interest in the Reds to Cincinnati businessman Carl Lindner. Despite an 85-77 finish in 2000, and being named 1999 NL Manager of the Year, McKeon was fired after the 2000 season. The Reds did not have another winning season until 2010. Great American Ballpark, the Reds' home stadium since 2003 Riverfront Stadium, by then known as Synergy Field, was demolished in 2002. Great American Ballpark opened in 2003, with high expectations for a team led by local favorites, including outfielder Ken Griffey Jr., shortstop Barry Larkin and first baseman Sean Casey. Although attendance improved considerably with the new ballpark, the Reds continued to lose. Schott had not invested much in the farm system since the early 1990s, leaving the team relatively thin on talent. After years of promises that the club was rebuilding toward the opening of the new ballpark, general manager Jim Bowden and manager Bob Boone were fired on July 28. This broke up the fatherson combo of manager Bob Boone and third baseman Aaron Boone, and the latter was soon traded to the New York Yankees. 
Tragedy struck in November when Darnell Stenson, a promising young outfielder, was shot and killed during a carjack. Following the season, Dan O'Brien was hired as the Reds' 16th general manager. The 2004 and 2005 seasons continued the trend of big hitting, poor pitching and poor records. Griffey Jr. joined the 500 home run club in 2004, but was again hampered by injuries. Adam Dunn emerged as consistent home run hitter, including a 535-foot home run against Jose Lima. He also broke the major league record for strikeouts in 2004. Although a number of free agents were signed before 2005, the Reds were quickly in last place, and manager Dave Miley was forced out in the 2005 midseason and replaced by Jerry Naren. Like many other small market clubs, the Reds dispatched some of their veteran players and began entrusting their future to a young nucleus that included Adam Dunn and Austin Kearns. Ken Griffey Jr. played in his hometown of Cincinnati from 2000 to 2008. 2004 saw the opening of the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame, which had been in existence in name only since the 1950s, with player plaques, photos and other memorabilia scattered throughout their front offices. Ownership and management desired a standalone facility where the public could walk through interactive displays, see locker room recreations, watch videos of classic Reds moments, and peruse historical items. The first floor houses a movie theater that resembles an older, ivy-covered brick wall ball yard. The hallways contain vintage photographs, and the rear of the building features a three-story wall containing a baseball for every hit Pete Rose had during his career. The third floor contains interactive exhibits including a pitcher's mound, radio booth and children's area where the fundamentals of baseball are taught through videos featuring former Reds players. Robert Castellini took over as controlling owner from Lindner in 2006. Castellini promptly fired general manager Dan O'Brien and hired Wayne Krivsky. The Reds made a run at the playoffs, but ultimately fell short. The 2007 season was again mired in mediocrity. Midway through the season, Jerry Naren was fired as manager and replaced by Pete McNinn. The Reds ended up posting a winning record under McNinn, but finished the season in fifth place in the Central Division. McNinn was manager in an interim capacity only, and the Reds, seeking a big name to fill the spot, ultimately brought in Dusty Baker. Early in the 2008 season, Krivsky was fired and replaced by Walt Jocchetti. Al how the Reds did not win under Krivsky, he is credited with revamping the farm system and signing young talent that could potentially lead the team to success in the future. The Reds failed to post winning records in both 2008 and 2009. In 2010, with NL MVP Joey Votto and Gold Glover's Brandon Phillips and Scott Rowland, the Reds posted a 91-71 record and were NL Central champions. The following week, the Reds became only the second team in MLB history to be no hit in a postseason, game when Philadelphia's Roy Halladay shut down the National League's number one offense in game one of the NLDS. The Reds lost in a three-game sweep of the NLDS to Philadelphia. After coming off their surprising 2010 NL Central Division title, the Reds fell short of many expectations for the 2011 season. Multiple injuries and inconsistent starting pitching played a big role in their mid-season collapse, along with a less productive offense as compared to the previous year. The Reds ended the season at 79-83, and won the 2012 NL Central Division title. On September 28, Homer Bailey threw a 1-0 no-hitter against the Pittsburgh Pirates, marking the first Reds no-hitter since Tom Browning's perfect game in 1988. Finishing with a 97-65 record, the Reds earned the second seed in the division series and a matchup with the eventual World Series champion, the San Francisco Giants. After taking a 2-0 lead with road victories at AT&T Park, they headed home looking to win the series. However, they lost three straight at their home ballpark, becoming the first National League team since the Chicago Cubs in 1984 to lose a division series after leading 2-0. Joey Votto, first baseman in the offseason, the team traded outfielder Drew Stubbs, as part of a three-team deal with the Arizona Diamondbacks and Cleveland Indians, to the Indians, and in turn received right fielder Shin Su Chu. On July 2, 2013, Homer Bailey pitched a no-hitter against the San Francisco Giants for a 4-0 Reds victory, making him the third pitcher in Reds history with two complete game no-hitters in their career. Following six consecutive losses to close out the 2013 season, including a loss to the Pittsburgh Pirates, at PNC Park, in the National League wildcard playoff game, the Reds decided to fire Dusty Baker. During his six years as manager, Baker led the Reds to the playoff three times, However, they never advanced beyond the first round. On October 22, 2013, 
the Reds hired pitching coach Brian Price to replace Baker as manager. They also hired longtime scout, John Cheddar Caprini. He has since become head scout and resides in Connecticut with his wife, Lou Lou. In between watching Bull Durham and Major League, Old Cheddar has run the Eastern Scouting Department for seven years. Under Brian Price, the Reds were led by pitchers Johnny Cueto and the hard-throwing Cuban Aroldis Chapman. While the offense was led by all-star third baseman Todd Frazier, Joey Votto, and Brandon Phillips. Although with plenty of star power, the Reds never got off to a good start and ending the season in lowly fourth place in the division to go along with a 76-86 record. During the offseason, the Reds traded pitchers Alfredo Simon to the Tigers and Matt Latos to the Marlins. In return, they acquired young talents such as Eugenio Suarez and Anthony De Sclafani. They also acquired veteran slugger Marlon Byrd from the Phillies to play left field. The Reds' 2015 season wasn't much better, as they finished with the second-worst record in the league with a record of 64-98, their worst finish since 1982. The Reds were forced to trade star pitchers Johnny Cueto and Mike Leake receiving minor league pitching prospects for both. Shortly after the season's end, the Reds traded home run derby champion Todd Frazier to the Chicago White Sox, and closing pitcher Aroldis Chapman to the New York Yankees. In 2016, the Reds broke the then record for home runs allowed during a single season, the Reds held this record until the 2019 season when it was broken by the Baltimore Orioles. The previous record holder was the 1996 Detroit Tigers with 241 long balls yielded to opposing teams. The Reds went 68-94, and again were one of the worst teams in the MLB. The Reds traded outfielder Jay Bruce to the Mets just before the July 31st non-waiver trade deadline in exchange for two prospects, infielder Dilson Herrera and pitcher Max Waddell. During the offseason, the Reds traded Brandon Phillips to the Atlanta Braves in exchange for two minor league pitchers. On September 25, 2020, the Reds earned their first postseason berth since 2013, ultimately earning the seventh seed in the expanded 2020 playoffs. The 2020 season had been shortened to 60 games as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Reds lost their first-round series against the Atlanta Braves two games to none. Great American Ballpark opened in 2003 along the Ohio River. The Cincinnati Reds play their home games at Great American Ballpark, located at 100 Joe Nuxall Way, in downtown Cincinnati. Great American Ballpark opened in 2003 at the cost of $290 million and has a capacity of 42,271. Along with serving as the home field for the Reds, the stadium also holds the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame was added as a part of Reds' tradition allowing fans to walk through the history of the franchise as well as participating in many interactive baseball features. Great American Ballpark is the seventh home of the Cincinnati Reds, built immediately to the west of the site on which Riverfront Stadium, later named Synergy Field, once stood. The first ballpark the Reds occupied was Bank Street Grounds from 1882 to 1883 until they moved to League Park I in 1884, where they would remain until 1893. Through the late 1890s and early 1900s, the Reds moved to two different parks where they stayed for less than 10 years. League Park II was the third home field for the Reds from 1894 to 1901, and then moved to the Palace of the Fans which served as the home of the Reds in the 1910s. It was in 1912 that the Reds moved to Crosley Field which they called home for 58 years. Crosley served as the home field for the Reds for two World Series titles and five National League pennants. Beginning June 30, 1970, and during the dynasty of the Big Red Machine, the Reds played in Riverfront Stadium, appropriately named due to its location right by the Ohio River. Riverfront saw three World Series titles and five National League pennants. It was in the late 1990s that the city agreed to build two separate stadiums on the riverfront for the Reds and the Cincinnati Bengals. Thus, in 2003, the Reds began a new era with the opening of the current stadium. The Reds hold their spring training in Goodyear, Arizona at Goodyear Ballpark. The Reds moved into this stadium and the Cactus League in 2010 after staying in the Grapefruit League for most of their history. The Reds share Goodyear Park with their rivals in Ohio, the Cleveland Indians. Logo throughout the team's history, many different variations of the classic Wishbone C logo have been introduced. In the team's early history, the Reds logo has been simply the Wishbone C with the word Reds inside, the only colors used being red and white. However, during the 1950s, during the renaming and rebranding of the team as the Cincinnati Redlegs because of the connections to communism of the word Reds, the color blue was introduced as part of the Reds' color combination. 
During the 1960s and 1970s the red saw a move towards the more traditional colors, abandoning the navy blue. A new logo also appeared with the new era of baseball in 1972, when the team went away from the script reds inside of the sea, instead, putting their mascot Mr. Redlegs in its place as well as putting the name of the team inside of the wishbone sea. In the 1990s the more traditional, early logos of reds came back with the current logo reflecting more of what the team's logo was when they were first founded. Along with the logo, the Reds' uniforms have been changed many different times throughout their history. Following their departure from being called the Red Legs in 1956 the Reds made a groundbreaking change to their uniforms with the use of sleeveless jerseys, seen only once before in the major leagues by the Chicago Cubs. At home and away, the cap was all red with a white wishbone C insignia. The long-sleeved undershirts were red. The uniform was plain white with a red wishbone C logo on the left and the uniform number on the right. On the road, the wishbone C was replaced by the mustachioed Mr. Red logo, the pillbox hat wearing man with a baseball for a head. The home stockings were red with six white stripes. The away stockings had only three white stripes. Scott Rowland wearing the current Reds away uniform, featuring classic lettering. The Reds changed uniforms again in 1961, when they replaced the traditional wishbone C insignia with an oval C logo, but continued to use the sleeveless jerseys. At home, the Reds wore white caps with the red bill with the oval C in red, white sleeveless jerseys with red pinstripes, with the oval C Reds logo in black with red lettering on the left breast and the number in red on the right. The gray away uniform included a gray cap with a red oval C and a red bill. Their gray away uniforms, which also included a sleeveless jersey, bore Cincinnati in an arched block style across with the number below on the left. In 1964, Players' last names were placed on the back of each set of uniforms, below the numbers. Those uniforms were scrapped after the 1966 season. However, the Cincinnati uniform design most familiar to baseball enthusiasts is the one whose basic form, with minor variations, held sway for 25 seasons from 1967 to 1992. Most significantly, the point was restored to the C insignia, making it a wishbone again. During this era, the Reds wore all red caps both at home and on the road. The caps bore the simple wishbone C insignia in white. The uniforms were standard short sleeve jerseys and standard trousers, white at home and gray on the road. The home uniform featured the wishbone C Reds logo in red with white type on the left breast and the uniform number in red on the right. The away uniform bore Cincinnati in an arched block style across the front with the uniform number below on the left. Red, Long-sleeved undershirts and plain red stirrups over white sanitary stockings completed the basic design. The Reds wore pinstriped home uniforms in 1967 only, and the uniforms were flannel through 1971, changing to double knits with pullover jerseys and beltless pants in 1972. Those uniforms lasted 20 seasons, and the 1992 Reds were the last MLB team to date whose primary uniforms featured pullover jerseys and beltless pants. The 1993 uniforms kept white and gray as the base colors for the home and away uniforms, but added red pinstripes. The home jerseys were sleeveless, showing more of the red undershirts. The color scheme of the C Reds logo on the home uniform was reversed, now red lettering on a white background. A new home cap was created that had a red bill and a white crown with red pinstripes and a red wishbone C insignia. The away uniform kept the all red cap, but moved the uniform number to the left, to more closely match the home uniform. The only additional change to these uniforms was the introduction of black as a primary color of the Reds in 1999, especially on their road uniforms. The Reds' latest uniform change came in December 2006 which differed significantly from the uniforms worn during the previous eight seasons. The home caps returned to an all-red design with a white wishbone C, lightly outlined in black. Caps with red crowns and a black bill became the new road caps. Additionally, the sleeveless jersey was abandoned for a more traditional design. The numbers and lettering for the names on the backs of the jerseys were changed to an early 1900s style typeface, and a handlebar mustached Mr. Redlegs, reminiscent of the logo used by the Reds in the 1950s and 1960s, was placed on the left sleeve. Barry Larkin playing in Riverfront Stadium in 1990 Frank Robinson Epirixi Ernie Lombardi The Cincinnati Reds have retired 10 numbers in franchise history. As well as honoring Jackie Robinson, whose number is retired league-wide around Major League Baseball. All of the retired numbers are located at Great American Ballpark behind home plate on the outside of the press box. Along with the retired player and manager number, 
The following broadcasters are honored with microphones by the broadcast booth, Marty Brenneman, Wade Hoyt, and Joe Nuxall. On April 15, 1997, number 42 was retired throughout Major League Baseball in honor of Jackie Robinson. The Reds have hosted the Major League Baseball All-Star Game five times, twice at Crosley Field, twice at Riverfront Stadium, and once at Great American Ballpark. The Ohio Cup Trophy The Ohio Cup was an annual preseason baseball game, which pitted the Ohio rivals Cleveland Indians and Cincinnati Reds. In its first series it was a single-game cup, played each year at Minor League Cooper Stadium in Columbus, was staged just days before the start of each new Major League Baseball season. A total of eight Ohio Cup games were played, in 1989-1996, with the Indians winning six of them. The winner of the game each year was awarded the Ohio Cup in post-game ceremonies. The Ohio Cup was a favorite among baseball fans in Columbus, with attendances regularly topping 15,000. The Ohio Cup games ended with the introduction of regular season interleague play in 1997. Thereafter, the two teams competed annually in the regular season Battle of Ohio or Buckeye series. The Ohio Cup was revived in 2008 as a reward for the team with a better overall record in the Reds Indian series each year. Marty Brenneman the Hall of Fame voice of the Reds The Reds flagship radio station has been WLW, 700 AM since 1969. Prior to that, the Reds were heard over, WKRC, WCPO, Psy and WCKY. WLW, a 50,000-watt station, is clear channel in more than one way, as iHeart Media owns the Blowtorch outlet which is also known as the Nation's Station. Reds games can be heard on over 100 local radio stations through the Reds on Radio Network. Since 2020, the Reds broadcast team has been former Pensacola Blue Wahoos radio play-by-play -play announcer Tommy Thrall and retired relief pitcher Jeff Brantley on color commentary. Marty Brenneman called Reds games from 1974 to 2019 all-songside former Reds pitcher and color commentator Joe Nuxall. Brenneman has won the Ford C. Frick Award for his work, which includes his famous call of, and this one belongs to the Reds. After a win. Nuxall preceded Brenneman in the Reds booth, beginning in 1967 until his death in 2007. In 2007, Tom Brenneman, a veteran announcer seen nationwide on Fox Sports, joined his father Marty in the radio booth. Brantley, formerly of ESPN, also joined the network in 2007. Three years later in 2010, Brantley and Tom Brenneman's increased TV schedule led to more appearances for Jim Kelch, who had filled in on the network since 2008. Kelch's contract expired after the 2017 season. In 2019, for all to provide in-game and post-game coverage as well as a fill-in play-by-play announcer. He succeeded Marty Brenneman when the former retired at the end of the 2019 season. Televised games are seen exclusively on Bally Sports Ohio and Bally Sports Indiana. In addition, Bally Sports South televises Bally Sports Ohio broadcasts of Reds games to Tennessee and Western North Carolina. George Gran, who hosted the first Sports Center on ESPN in 1979, was the play-by-play -play announcer, usually alongside Chris Welsh, from 1993 until his retirement during the final game of the 2009 season. Since 2009, Grant has worked part-time for the Reds as play-by-play -play announcer in September when Tom Brenneman is covering the NFL for Fox Sports. He has also made guest appearances throughout the season. Brenneman has been the head play-by-play -play commentator since 2010, with Welsh and Brantley sharing time as the color commentators. Paul Keels, who left in 2011 to become the play-by-play -play announcer for the Ohio State Buckeyes radio network, was the Reds' backup play-by-play -play television announcer during the 2010 season. Jim Kelf served as Keels' replacement. The Reds also added former Cincinnati first baseman Sean Casey, known as the mayor by Reds fans, to do color commentary for approximately 15 games in 2011. NBC affiliate WLWT carried Reds games from 1948 to 1995. Among those that have called games for WLWT include Wade Hoyt, Ray Lane, Steve Fiziok, Johnny Bench, Joe Morgan, and Ken Wilson. Al Michaels, who established a long career with ABC and NBC, spent three years in Cincinnati early in his career. The last regularly scheduled, over-the-air broadcasts of Reds games were on WSTR-TV from 1996 to 1998. Since 2010, WKRC-TV has simulcast opening day games with Fox Sports Ohio. On August 19, 2020, Tom Brenneman was caught uttering a homophobic slur during a game against the Kansas City Royals. 
Brenneman eventually apologized for the incident and was suspended, but on September 26, he resigned from his duties as Reds TV play-by-play announcer. This ended the Brenneman's 36-year association with the Reds franchise, dating back to Marty's first season in 1974. Sideline reporter Jim Day served as the interim play-by-play voice for the remainder of the 2020 season, after which the Reds hired John Sadak to serve as its television play-by-play announcer. The Reds Community Fund, founded in 2001, is focused on the youth of the greater Cincinnati area, with the goal of improving the lives of participants by leveraging off the traditions of the Reds. The fund sponsors the Reviving Baseball Inner Cities program with a goal of 30 to 50 young people graduating high school and attending college annually. The fund holds an annual telethon, raising in excess of $120,000. An example of the fund's community involvement is its renovation of Hoffman Fields in the Evanston neighborhood of the city. Upgrading the entire recreation complex, for a total of over 400 baseball diamonds renovated at 200 locations throughout the region. During the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, since no spectators were allowed at MLB games, the Reds offered fans the opportunity to purchase paper cutouts of their own photographs in the stands at Great American Ballpark. The promotion raised over $300,000 for the fund, more than the fund's tradition events such as Reds Fist, the Red Legs Run, an annual golf outing, and the Fox Sports Ohio Telethon. The Cincinnati Reds farm system consists of six minor league affiliates. Thanks for watching.